right so this is the first uh, stage this is block one on our farm quilt you can download it's already up you can download sheep block one this is a 12 inch finished block okay and that's sort of my colors i'm going to use i'm going to use this for the uh, body i'm going to use a bit of uh, fleece for the face and out of my bag of greens i'm going to use oh i don't know you've got to pick you know i pulled out a load of greens uh so i guess on i'm guessing that i might use a piece of uh that looks like grass to me that one have i got any of that cut um because i've already cut some so let me just see if there's a bit oh that would do no it's not wide enough so ah that'll do i think let me see what size i need so this is how i'm working yeah i pulled out you know quite a bit that's right quite a bit of greens and obviously i pulled out pinks and, and reds for other things and then what i pulled out i'm putting in a bag so that uh you know i can kind of work this into the quilt so that there are uh, corresponding greens in different squares so that it pulls it together yeah now part of the instructions say grass one and a half inch by 12 and a half inch rectangle now i know because of what i just did that this is one and a half inches wide it needs an iron now uh i also uh it's only because it's been screwed up in the bag but I do spray my work with half and half water and Mary Ellen's Best Press. Give it a spray. Well, I give the sheet a spray before I cut it out so I know that it's got a bit of starch in it and already um, pre shrunk. So uh, if I get a ruler now to show you that this is, yeah, one and a half inches wide and I want to. 12 and a half inches long so i'll just get a uh, friction pen which will iron off easier once you spread it once you've um, used mary Anna's best press it protects the fabric yeah so 12 and a half hang on move my uh, thing around beg your pardon our goose right so uh putting this on the baseline uh so 12 and a half is <laughs> so sorry 12 and a half is there okay so i just made the mark and now i can take my cutter <sighs> making sure i'm lined up with the top of the fabric and just cut that spare off so that's 12 and a half i will give that a quick press before i use it but that's the grass okay now the next thing is we need to move on to the body of the sheep uh, and so first of all using white i'm going to be cutting the background I'm just hoping that I've got the uh, enough light in here for you to see what I'm doing. Okay, so I just pulled out some white background. I'm going to cut the background now. I try to marry up the edges, but as you can see, they're not that brilliant. This is a bit of an off cut of white. I got loads of it, but you know, I'm going to use up what I got to start with. Uh, that's not going to fit under what I want to do. So I am going to fold it again, and you can see all these edges are jagged, yeah? And what I want, if you look at your cutting instructions for background, you've got one two and a half by ten and a half, four two and a half inch squares, one, um, one and a half by nine and a half, one one and a half by seven, 
two one and a half by two and a half by uh and that's it right okay so basically the majority of that is saying two and a half isn't it so you could either use a ruler like this cut off your ragged edge and then cut or as i am going to do is get my <laughs> if i've got enough room get my uh large cutter in this i prefer oh, this fleece out of the way a moment and uh i prefer to use this because i find it far more accurate okay so i'm lining up my top crease and i'm going to bring in my naught naught line so that i get a clean cut on this edge now, I folded this again and again and again, so I'm going to have to press really hard, yeah? But I'm going to give myself a clean cut now, hopefully. Oh, I've still not done it. Give me the bugger. Put that back then. Put it right back where it should be. Change my cutter. Yeah. Now, oh, that's not really clean, is it? No. So I'm just going to do that again. So I do want a clean cut with all these folds of fabric. There we go. Now, I got a nice clean cut, yeah? So that blade wants changing. Okay, so I'm going to cut, put that edge back on. I want, and that's straight on that fold. I want two and a half inches, yeah? So now... I'm going to make that cut, hopefully be able to put my um, ruler away. Have I got two and a half inches? Yes, I do. Okay, so that's uh, not required at the moment. And now I need a sub cut. And this is a 60 inches wide bit of cotton. It's now two and a half inches wide. So now we need to sub cut. All right, then. so I got my scraps here. I got my list of instructions of what I need here. So background from the white, yeah. Uh, as I said, this is two and a half inches wide. So now I need to cut the lengths of what you know the different lengths. Uh, I find that this is going to be the easiest way to do it. Now you can use no. Obviously, I got to I got to get rid of um, a. Um, what do you call it? Selvage here, okay. Uh, kind of make sure that this is uh, not too wonky. Okay, as we go, bringing it back a little bit. So, first of all, cutting off the selvage, which is going to go in the scrap, and then I want uh, two and a half by ten and a half. So ten and a half is there. Okay, so there's one. That's one bit. Move my uh, bit along without upsetting it too much. And then I want um, trying to straighten it out actually. Right. Okay. Uh, Terribly straight. All right. I'm just gonna straighten it as best I can. All right, and then I want um 
four two and a half inch squares. Well, we know that it's two and a half inches wide. So again, I'm just going to make my knot knot cut. Uh, two and a half, uh, five, seven and a half, and ten. Okay, so I should have now the scrap. One, two, three, four, two and a half inch squares. Okay, let's move my strip further in. What do I need now? Uh, and now I need a uh, one and a half by nine and a half, right? So I know it's two and a half inches wide. However, we can uh, deal with that in a minute. So one and a half by nine and a half okay but that needs to be cut down so i'm leaving that to the left of me um and then one and a half by seven inches okay so yeah again we'll just whop that under yeah and bring it back not by seven inches long again that's got to be one and a half so that needs to be cut down as well right okay and then the last thing we want is two and a half by one and a half so we can take that one plonk that on give myself a clean cut and say well that's one and a half because we already know that it's two and a half inches wide so we got that now that's that done i can get rid of the rest of that white and then i can take this white and plonk under you could do this with numerous types of um <coughs> cutting devices i just prefer this one so i'll give myself a clean cut and then it's one and a half. I know that the, the, the length of it is right. So now I know the width of it is correct. And again, with this one that we put to one side, I can plonk under here. All right. And square it up with my ruler. I say, okay, give myself a clean cut, and it's one and a half inches wide. And we already know it's the right length. Then I could take that one out, and that one's done. So this is all scrap. Now, I don't throw away any material scraps like this. My material scraps like this, I don't throw it away. I got a, kitchen, a white kitchen bin liner hung up, and I save everything to use as stuffing for other projects. The next part is the sheet body. And again, I'm using this method. I look at the instructions and it says five, five inch by 10 and a half, four and a half by five inch, two and a half inch square, two and a half inch square, one and a half by two and a half inch rectangle, rectangle and four one and a half inch squares. So basically, those two and a half inch squares are going to come out of half five. And the largest thing I want is five. So I need to cut myself a five inch strip. Okay. As we go further into this, we will be using up these odds. So I'm just going to place that under my uh, strip. And again, using this my sharp one now. Oh, we moved it over. I can give myself a nice sharp uh, knot cut and then say five inches. Okay. And this is widths of fabric. So I'm going to have plenty left over. Bit of scrap, bit of that. 
bit of scrap okay so now i know this is a five inch strip so the first measurement is five inch by ten and a half inch and yes that has got a selvage on it so i'm just gonna plonk that down straighten it up as best i can and say well okay if i put my line against there and then i'm gonna cut away my selvage and i want it ten and a half ten and a half so i got my first piece ready and done move it along I, i'm always trying to figure out the best way to cut this without uh wasting fabric oh that must be right on a fold so when i square that up i'm just going to cut off that end because it happened to be right on a fold line right okay and then i want four and a half so come along four and a half so there's my next square move along the boat straighten it out now i am going into a lot of detail about how i'm cutting with uh, this particular first um first square so that you know you're happy with it uh what do we need now for that that two and a half inch squares okay so it, knowing that this is five inches wide how many do we need one two eventually i can cut a two and a half inch line and then turn it around okay put my naught naught on the edge and say well let's cut that then into two and a half so now I've got two two and a half inch squares. Okay. Uh, then I want two and a half by one and a half and four one and a half inch squares. Okay, so that's not quite as simple as it sounds. However, let's uh, just uh, straighten that fabric up a bit. Okay and say well then uh we're looking for one and a half by two and a half inch rectangle so rectangle so that's one and a half put that to the left of me and then i want some uh, i want four one and a half inch squares so if i cut this uh take my naught naught line back and say if i cut this three inches wide knowing that it's already five inches wide i can then do it e either way i can say well then i want it one and a half which is cutting right at the middle and turn it around this way And say, well, now, again, I'm going to straighten up my edge and say I want not not line, one and a half, and three. And then I've got my one, two, three, four, one and a half inch triangles. So that's a bit of scrap and this one was two and a half let's see where we got hang on i got four one and a half inches i know i did that yeah i got two two and a half inch squares and then this one was going to be one and a half by two and a half inch rectangle so i could put that back under yeah give myself a square edge and say i want this just to be one and a half 
by two and a half. Yeah. So that's that. So all of that, I'll keep that bit because that's quite big. So now I've cut all my sheet bits. The only bits I haven't cut are the head and the tail, which I said to you I'm going to cut out a fleece. Okay, so now uh, I said I wanted to do, now this is very flimsy this, it's got it's um, got a pattern on the back but you can't see it that side, but that is very flimsy fleece, it's more, mm, I don't know, it's more slinky type stuff anyway, that's one, and then in here I got um, some, oh if I could just get it open, in this one, this is, oh, like bare fabric. I, I'm not going to use that. I last used that when I did a polar bear. I have to put the picture up. I did a polar bear um, applique on grey fleece for hot water bottle. And I did a polar bear with that. It's lovely. But uh, I think this one, which is a very short, yeah, short haired fleece. But it's still got texture to it rather than it just be plain cotton. Uh, so anyway, we don't need an awful lot of it. What do we need? We need uh, head and tail, three and a half by five, two and a half by three, two and a half by three, and a one and a half inch square for his tail. So basically, the uh, factor is uh, five inches, isn't it? So that's that's what we're looking at. That's the biggest we want. Yeah, and then we'll see what we do. So this time I'm going to cut it with an ordinary ruler, okay, which happens to be five inches wide. Wow, that's unusual. Most of my rulers are six and a half, but anyway, this happens to be five. Again, I've got a, a piece there to get rid of. So I am just... Back to front now for me. I am just going to cut uh, the side down here. Now, when I use an ordinary ruler, that's going to be scrap. Notice that I keep the top line, so I'm, I'm giving myself a right angle here, so I know it's straight. So that's five inches. So I'm going to cut this bit, not me with my ruler. Cut that at five inches, and I got a five inch piece. So, what do we need now? What did we say the first one is? Always cut the biggest first head and tail, three and a half by five inch rectangle. Well, we know it's five and a half inches uh, wide. So, if I turn it on its side and say, Well, three and a half, where's the half inch line on this one? This is not my, f there it is. And again, I'm, I'm making a right angle cut, yeah? So, three and a half inches, cut that off. So, we're going to want that. Okay, and then what's the next piece we want is a two and a half by three inch rectangle. Now, we know that's five. So, if we just put a three on it, yeah, again... I'm making myself out my uh, 90 degrees. So that is three inches wide by three inches. Where am I? Three inch rectangle by two and a half. Well, if that's five inches wide, then I can put two and a half on here. Yeah. Mm hmm. Hang on a moment. If that's five, which it is, then where's two and a half then? Two and a half should be there. But this looks bigger than that, so why is that then? Hmm. It don't look right to me somehow. If that's five, half of it, it's not five, it's six. How can it be? One, two, three, four, five. So it's actually six, you little bugger. 
Okay. So you put the five on there. I don't know. I haven't used this ruler for donkey's years. Okay, so that's five. Right? So then if I put two and a half on the edge, does that look right? Yes, it does. So now I got two, two and a half by three inch squares. Uh, and what's the next one? I go ahead and tell two and a half by three and another one, two of them, right? And then I want one, one and a half inch square. And why do we want that? Is that one and a half? No. So we want this is a little tail, isn't it? So one and a half inches. Okay, on there. One and a half that way. Spin it round. And one and a half that way. And this is for the little tiny tail. So then these pieces, well, I am just going to put it back in the bag. Because I don't know whether I'm going to want fleece anymore. And get rid of my fleece. And that's another bit to go in my scrap over there. So now, it's a bit of scrap as well. We have got all, should have, all the bits. I am going to give them a press under the iron. But we should have all the bits we need now to make this um, 12 and a half inch block for the sheep. And I'm going to show you how to, I'm going to show you as I sew it. But uh, not on this video, because this has been quite an in-depth way of showing how to cut things. Um, the ruler that I was using earlier on is called a um, Stripology XL ruler, yeah, by um, Creative Grids. I've had mine a very long time. The reason that I use it is because I know I'm going to get perfect straight lines. My ruler's not going to slip. And, uh, you know, if I'm cutting uh, four, two and a half inch squares on a strip, I go one, two, three, four, one. Right? It's a lot quicker for me. And it's a lot quicker for me to cut the strip off initially when I'm doing it on a, a, a width of fabric and this sort of thing, because I could just fold it up and cut it. Uh, it's entirely up to you how you do it, whether you use an ordinary ruler, or whether you use the um, Creative Grids ruler, the uh, Stripology XL ruler. And I know they're not cheap. I think mine cost me about, oh, I don't know, 55 quid, something like that. It's not cheap, but I have had it years and years and years. So if, it's, if you have problems um, cutting things, and it does also have on it the ability to square up squares as well, then it is an investment and it'll last you donkey's years. So, right, so we're, I'm ready now. I'm going to just give this a quick press, not stretching anything, just literally a press, straight on with the thing, not pushing or shoving, straight on with my uh, iron so that it's just nice and flat for me to work with. And then we'll come back to the next video and we'll put it together.